for a couple of reasons, especially in the cancer area. First and foremost, whether you want to think of it that way or not, that's panhandling. It is. You're standing on a street corner holding a can, shaking it around, asking people to give you their spare change. Now, I don't have a problem with panhandling per se. However, if that were just an individual standing on the street corner, shaking a can, asking people to give him spare change to help him, people would get upset about it. In fact, I'm sure most, I, I believe most townships, cities, if not states, I, I have a law against it. So my, my first real issue with this, whether it be for cancer or for any other purpose, is if one form of panhandling is going to have a stigma, then all forms should, and vice versa. If we're going to accept one form of panhandling, we should accept all forms of panhandling. I don't think just because we're slapping a label on it and making it for a cause it should be acceptable. And if you want to really think about it, and I want you to put this into perspective, what are they going to raise doing that today? Let's be generous. Let's say they raise $50 standing on the street corner shaking their can. And I realize there are women out there that make a whole lot more than that in a night, standing on a street corner shaking their can. But that's a whole different thing. Let's be real. $50 is not going to have an impact on the fight against cancer. Not for one patient, let alone a bunch. However, $50 in the hands of a person that is suffering, it makes an impact. It makes a difference. So just think about that. Here's my other reason for not liking it or having a problem with it, especially in the realm of cancer. I know a guy, or knew a guy, in Phoenix, Arizona, who helped cure 13 people, including himself, of cancer, using, I believe, the bark of a tree. Now, this is a method that both the American government and the American Medical Association are well aware of but will not validate, even though it works. Will not approve, even though it works. Even though it would be more cost effective for the patient, obviously, than chemotherapy, radiation therapy. Has less of a side effect impact on the patient. And from what I can tell, works better. So I will help in the fight against cancer when our government actually takes a stand, makes a responsible decision, and does something for the fight against cancer. That's my take on that. Hate me if you will. Greedy bastard. See, that's why there are accidents. And that's why traffic gets fucked up. Because now I was being nice, doing the right thing. Every other car lets a car go at an off-ramp like that. I let the woman here that's in front of me go, and this guy behind her was like, well, I'm going to go too. Fuck you, you are not. And normally I would have just let him go, but not today. I, fuck that. Fuck that. Wait in line, take your turn, be fucking patient. Cocksucker. <laughs> oh! Urgh, people! My legs and ankles are tired from bouncing up and down all day, picking up product to scan. My wrist hurts because I spend the day like this, clicking this button. My friggin' wrist doesn't hurt this much for masturbation, and I do a lot of that. Today we're talking about the stupidity of people. 
For instance, the jackass that just tried to cut line on the highway. For those of you that don't know, my father is a comedian. Um, a professional comedian for 60 plus years. And he's been doing this Branson, Missouri style show at a dinner theater in New Jersey for a number of years. And recently, he came home upset because, oh, the battery's going to die. Because he had been asked not to tell sex jokes. He told some sex jokes. Somebody got offended. And I don't understand what is wrong with people. Because, like, I've been watching The Nanny lately to go to because it's good to go to sleep. I watched it the other night. I caught five minutes or less at the very end of the show, and I heard three sexual innuendos. It, it's not a big deal. We all know what sex is, whether we have it or not. Now, I don't know if it's because it's a local thing that people feel they can influence what kind of material the artist uses or, or what, what the deal is. But I don't understand why people or a person got up in arms about a couple of jokes that had sexual innuendo. But furthermore, and I, I had said this to my father, like I kept telling my dad he was a much better person. They'd come to me and tell me, well, you can't tell these kinds of jokes anymore. And I'd say, well, then you find yourself in it. Thank you, have a nice day. And he did kind of imply that to, uh, to the guy that runs the show. Like, maybe it's time I just pack it in. Oh, no, 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 don't do that. But within a week, following that moment. I heard, and I know my father heard at least one of them, two well-known comedians say very similar things and right. in regards to such a matter. One was Joan Rivers and they showed her at a, at a gig and she told a joke and some guy in the audience was like, that's not funny! That's rude! That's inconsiderate! That's this, that's that! And she was like, okay, look, it's a joke. If you can't get the joke, fuck you. So that's that. It looks like we're at the end of week four. That's all the news that is news, the news in and around the nation. It's a really beautiful sunset. Days smaller than night. Nothing but blue skies. From now on, that looks as It's good. Things are really good, actually. Look, I just wanted to call backwards and tell you to hang on to your hat because things are getting wicked here, man. I mean, not only in your life, but with videos and editing and posting. So I just kind of wanted to give you a heads up. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, not a problem. Listen, I'll see you when you get here, all right? Sounds good.